Hey there, it's Ryan, and today we are going to be painting a nice, finely detailed, real-time landscape with acrylic paints. And before we begin, I will run you through our materials. I will be personally working with pigments from Windsor and Newton with my brush set. It is a five-piece brush set, and I use it for all the lessons here on the channel. With that, I will be working on an 8 by 10 inch canvas. I have a small dish of water and some paper towel to wipe off all of my excess water and pigment. Now, if you're looking at the image and you're thinking, oh no, I'm not, not great at drawing. Don't worry, I also have the traceable up over on Patreon, so you will get the perspective, the sizing, the details, all of that just right. And up there you can also get things like the reference photos, bonus lessons, we do art critiques, and you can also get my ebooks, which include acrylics for beginners. So if you're interested, check it out, but those are the materials and we are about to get started. We are going to begin here today by taking our large flat-headed brush and dipping it into just a little bit of water. This is going to help keep our paint wet for a bit longer. Then we'll grab an abundance of our titanium white, about an equal mixture of our ultramarine blue, and yet again, about an equal mixture of our Mars black. This should render a nice bluish gray on the darker side. And we're going to use this for our sand right here in the foreground. We're using the larger flat headed brush because it can pick up a lot of paint, move it around with ease, and we have quite an area to block in here. Now I am going to leave an area right here in the middle because I'm actually going to switch to a burnt sienna Again, some titanium white, hint of Mars black, and with this we're going to render what will essentially be the base layer for our reflections down here in the sand. And then we're going to blend that to the left and right, just like so. And we can get it to be a little bit streaky. That's actually a benefit because it will have a lot of water that's just very minuscule, washing up and creating little highlights and reflections. So we want the corners to be a bit darker, but we can have this orange work its way throughout to varying degrees. And we can grab some more, rework that into the center, and build that center area up to be a bit brighter. It's worth noting if we apply a lot of pressure here with all of this wet paint, we'll just be kind of stripping it off. And that's not the goal. So what we want to do is we want to go into the very soft touch while working wet into wet. And that's what I'm doing right here. We're not really going to get to a bright orange because we are blending into this much darker pigment, and that's okay. We'll build up the true highlights in future layers. We can also take our darker blues from the edge and work them in. And this is just going to give us a lot of variation with how our water's presenting itself in the foreground. Now, once we let that fully dry to the touch, we're going to remix our brighter hue. Again, burnt sienna, titanium white, we can do a little bit of our cad yellow and a little bit of our naples yellow. The naples yellow will brighten it and bring it towards more of an orange without giving it too much saturation. The cad yellow will give it a lot of saturation. I want something kind of in between. Now when we go into apply this, as you can immediately see, it goes on much more dramatically than our past application of the highlight because we're no longer mixing into the darker pigment. That's that time to dry and that which we apply at this point can really stand out as a reflection should. And I'm going to start dragging some of these edges very softly out towards the left and right hand side just following their natural paths. 
I'm also, as you can see, not applying a lot of pressure. When you apply less pressure with your brush, not only do you relieve yourself of streaks, but you also get a much sharper marking, much more controlled. A lot of my lines aren't straight and horizontal. They move on a bit of a diagonal path. There we go. And then we can also just give the sand as a whole a bit of a sheen by using the whole head of the brush to brighten things a bit more dramatically towards the top. I still want the corners to be a bit darker, that way we have a nice vignette effect. Draw the eye in towards the center of the piece. But this is an easy way of adding a lot of light to the painting. Okay, now we're going to go with an even brighter, but more saturated, or rather less saturated mix. That means more Naples yellow, more titanium white, just like so. A little bit of our burnt sienna. We don't need the Mars black in the mix anymore, and we'll just lose that as we continue to get brighter and build. This is going to go in that center area. We'll have it work its way out, but we're not going to have it work its way all out. We want this to exist more so in the middle of our past applications. And we need to build up that orange base before we do any of this because yellow over blue will look green, but if we add the orange first, then we can add the yellow safely without getting the green. Now we can wait for it to dry before we proceed, or we can continue wet into wet. I'm going to try wet into wet. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'll let it dry. But I'm going to interject a bit more of my cad yellow into the mix with titanium white. You can see that we're moving from an orange to more of a yellow. And again, every, every layer we add, we increase our opportunity to add more yellow into the mix void the fear of green. And I'm going to add this into that central portion. You can see towards the edges, it does still progress into the orange. We want all of these different layers to build and give us something that has a bit more depth. And even this can get a lot brighter, a lot more vibrant. It's all part of the process. We can also take a bit of this orange, I'm just looking at the reference photo, and expand that out here and there. This is a great easy way of throwing in additional detail to the painting. Maybe there's a bit of extra water over on that side. Starting to run out of paint, so now I can do not really a wash or a glaze, but just build up some extra highlight in an easy way. And a bit of finger painting, of course. Never get too old for finger painting. Okay, so yet again, we just waited for all of that to fully dry, and now we're going to go in with a Naples yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna, make that nice and damp. We want this to be almost like a watercolor. We don't want a lot of actual pigment on our brush. And then from the side of the center, we're just going to softly, and again, I want more water. I don't want it to be opaque. I'm just going to softly apply this over portions of the blue. That way we don't have any flat areas and it all kind of comes together naturally. With that, I think, well actually, 
go back to more of a blue mix. Very much akin to what we initially had. And because we just applied that wash of sorts to the canvas, we can blend this into just about everything. So I'm going to start at the bottom, I'm going to work my way up, and this I'm also going to make quite wet, like a watercolor. So we're painting with very thin layers and subtlety. And with this I'm just going to bring us back to having that highlight mostly, not entirely, but mostly in the middle. But you can still see through this, right? We can still see those highlights. We're just making everything a bit more subtle. Layers that you only really appreciate when you're up close and you can see them. But it does add to the painting as a whole. Like that. We can even go a bit brighter. especially for the top here. And we can bring this in. Like so. No, it still doesn't look great. That's okay. We're just building foundations. That's a big part of acrylics. It's having that patience, trusting the process. We will get there. You have seen, you've seen what the painting looks like in the end. I'm yet to, but through the, through the magic of editing, you're already there. And here again, I'm just using a bit of a slightly brighter bluish gray to establish additional movements along the side. We can go in with more of a burnt sienna, Naples yellow mix, predominantly burnt sienna. Take the excess off the paint, off the brush. Blend that into what we just applied. Not to any grand amount, but we're kind of just going back and forth till we get a mix and a blend that we love. I think that's pretty great for now. Now, let's get a little bit closer and we'll start applying some real highlights and some real details. I am actually first just going to fix a little bit of the center area make this line work slightly sharper. It's not necessary. It's only if you feel like you dragged the blue in slightly more than you wanted to. But we essentially just want the center to be fairly bright for our next highlights and details. Because this next layer is where it starts to look the way we really want it to. Now what we're going to do is add some texture to the sand in here that's still being seen through that thin layer of water which is garnering this reflection. And so what we need to do initially is recreate the orange that we had on the side which for the most part is the burnt sienna titanium white hint of our Naples yellow as well as our cad yellow. We can also throw a hint of Mars Black in there, provided we have very small amounts of said yellow. But we'll mix that up. We'll make a fairly wide mix as well, so that I can grab my fan brush for the first time. Grab a small amount of paint, and then tap to continue all of those little protrusions on both sides. You can see it looks like a sheen, it looks like sand, it adds a new texture. 
settle all of the good things. Now here you can see from a bit of a distance just how stark it is from afar, which is important because realistically people don't look at paintings from half a foot away, they look at them from half a room away. And getting that wider perspective is always necessary to craft a painting that can live properly within a real space, right? So here we go, continuing lots of those taps. I like to start with a very small amount and then slowly we build up. It's a lot easier to add these textures than it is to take them away. So starting cautiously is to our real benefit. And when we get truly close to us, right in this section, we want to make sure that they're sharp and distinct. These ones are really important because the closer we get, the more detail we see in subjects. There we go. Do just a little bit more. And then we'll move on to the next step of making this look nice and proper. You can see that there's slight expansion, a little bit of random portions or towards the sides. Just subtly a little bit. Now from there, we'll grab more of our cad yellow, our titanium white, and we'll build essentially a brighter yellow and a more saturated yellow than that which we've used before. We're moving closer and closer to real highlights, and we're going to start applying this with a smaller, just grabbing it, flat-headed brush. This is a lot like the big one, but we just get a more refined application. We can be a bit more intentional, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm heading into the middle. I'm applying this beautiful light into the center of our applications. We are allowing the edges to trail off. We still want those to be nice and sharp. When we apply a lot of paint, we can get this very thick application, which is actually great because it means you won't have to go back and apply it time and time again. Where when we really spread it out, we almost ensure that a second, a third, a fourth layer will be necessary. And I can tell there's a bit of a cloud up at the top here, which is going to create a slight separation in our highlights. So we're going to have this middle area be a little bit less bright. You can just see it in the reference photo too. And it just makes it for a much more interesting piece as a whole, to be honest. Combining some of these and then going back up and sharpening the edges with very intentional drags, but short ones. Looking for that sharp edge, but There we go. 
We're getting there. It's taken some layers, it's taken some time, but it's definitely feeling rewarding. I think often subjects like this that do take a lot of back and forth are the ones you feel the best about at the end. You know that we really, really gave it our all. Right? Now from here we're going back to our fan brush and we're doing that same thing. We're going to the edges, we're adding some texture, we can even go in the middle. That said, we're not going out as far as we did beforehand because we're trying to keep this light fairly concentrated towards the center. It's also worth noting that I did clean my fan brush However, I dried it perfectly before going back in with this because this fan brush is from my painting set, which I use for all of these acrylic lessons. You can find it in the video description. But this is a very special fan brush in that it's not quite a stiff bristled or a soft bristled fan brush. When it's dry, it's a stiff bristled but when it's wet, it really clumps like a soft. So rather than having to jump back and forth between two fan brushes, I can just use this one. And right now I want a stiff bristled application. So a lot of fine bristles. When it's stiff, you get to make, you know, 25, 30 different markings all at once. Where with a soft bristled fan brush, it's more like five or six. So right now I want to make, you know, closer to 30. So I need to keep it dry. So when I wash it, before I apply pigment again, I do need to dry it thoroughly. Just on a little painting cloth or paper towel. But it makes a big difference. And I just love having that option. I'm definitely getting there. Applying very softly, next to no pressure. See that the more layers we build up, the better and better it looks. Again, the foreground is the most important part. So I'm being extra cautious through here. Very intentional. Not always pressing the entirety of the brush into it. Sometimes it's just about a third of the brush. Often I would say it's just about a third of the brush. We can soften the ones towards the edges a bit because we don't want these to be as sharp anyway. We want to bring the attention towards the center of the painting. And that's best achieved by making the edges a little bit darker and a little bit softer. But by Throwing just hints of this around the edges we make this contextually make more sense. So it's all about finding that balance. There we go. Now, yet again, let's get closer, but let's let it dry first. In the meantime, we'll clean our brush, make sure that it's nice and first wet, and then fully dry. Okay, so yet again, that's nice and dry. We're going to grab an abundance of our titanium white, a little bit of that cad yellow, and here you can see by far the brightest pigment we've rendered. Still going to incorporate a little bit of that Naples yellow too, just warm it up in a not too saturated way. And then switch on over to our smaller flat headed brush. We've established that there is going to be essentially two lines of highlight. And the one over here to the right, it's smaller. So I'm just going in with for the most part, a little bit of a tap and I drag it left or right without being too dramatic. Then we'll head on over to the other side 
And much like our previous layers, I'm trying to leave remnants of the yellows that we just applied towards both sides. So we're slowly building in to have something that's brighter in the center where the light's really going to be coming down and reflecting, right? Lots of little taps and drags. As noted, this is, this is really the section where things start to feel right in terms of a reflection. Bringing it together. Now I'm going back in without a drag and it's just a tap and that's to get a more opaque application. Something that's a bit sharper, has a real sheen to it, or at least implied sheen. It's much more distinct now, right? And this is just such a cathartic portion of the painting because you feel like you're being rewarded. Feel like all of that effort you put in is starting to really pay off in a big way. Now I'm going to switch back to the larger flat headed brush to a bit more of a mix because that was starting to dry on my palette. And again, it has a bit of cad yellow, but it's mostly Naples yellow. And now we're picking up that fully dry fan brush. Taking my pinky finger, bracing it on my easel to eliminate shake from my hand. We're applying this over top the applications we just made and also extending them to the left and right hand side. Not using the entirety of this at any point. Might look like I'm pressing all of it in, but I'm not. And I accidentally had this curve downwards in a way that I didn't really want. So I'm just going to try to make that make sense with the rest of these. Make that movement a bit more of a cohesive thing, but also Flatten it. Not a grand degree, but enough that it makes sense context wise. Let me get some reflections just in the middle. Not as much as what we have on the sides, but still powerful. I think over here we've put a lot of application and time in and I love that, but because of that, this area to the left needs a bit more care, a bit more application to kind of catch up. So that's what we're doing. We're catching it up. And then of course, as we always talk about, the importance of the foreground, so we'll get here too. Now we'll take a step back and we'll go back to the blue that we used for the backing. So Mars Black, Titanium White, Ultramarine Blue. It's a very gray heavy mix. And you do want to make sure that your brush and your water are nice and clean before you do this, that way you don't accidentally mix yellows into the blue and render this a bit more of a green. That said, I think we're pretty close. We just go back and forth. We ask ourselves, is it saturated enough? Is it dark enough? Is it too saturated? Is it too dark? And then we course correct until we find what we want. Then we pick up our liner brush for the first time. Great for very intentional 
mark making. We'll grab this. I have quite a bit of water on my brush. And we can reinstigate markings that partially and fully cut through. This is going to be yet another great little layer of detail. Doesn't take much time or effort, but has a big impact. And we have areas that it already makes sense to incorporate it in. So we have a framework that we're playing with. Can also do little taps here and there just to make the edges feel as natural as possible. Try to make sure that your divots aren't all the same size. You do want variance. And we're also going to add little rocks, different subjects of that nature up towards the top. And I'm going to make this slightly darker for that application. So additional Mars Black. I can tell that the paint's starting to dry on my palette a bit, so I'm going to mix up a bit more just for the sake of longevity. And we'll continue to work with the same pigment as long as we need it. And here, again, with a darker pigment than we've used, we interject these pebbles, these areas that while light is on them, they do not reflect it to any real degree. And then we can have some darker markings work our way in. We're going to put a wave right across the top and it'll cast a shadow along the edge. I think we'll actually cut quite a bit of this off. There we go. Okay, so far so good. This isn't complete, but I don't want to do much more with it until we've established other portions of the painting so we know how much detail we can incorporate without making it overwhelming in terms of balance with the rest of the painting. So I think we have a great base in here. I really like how it's looking and we've built it up enough that we can start working on other pieces. So let's move up in the painting and then we can come back to this a little bit later. You know what? I said we were done with this area, but I think we can do one more little layer of water. This is going to be with a slightly brighter version than what we used for the actual base. So I'm just adding in a bit of extra titanium white I'm also going to make my brush quite damp, so this is quite transparent. And I can just see in the reference photo, there are areas of the darker water that have a bit of a sheen to it. The most notable one right there. And then I can kind of follow through to this side. Again, you don't have to do this. You can kind of watch me do it first, see if you like it. But I think this could be a great way of bringing it together. I think it was a little stark before as a whole. Yeah, okay, I love that. Over the areas we like a couple of times. There we 
go. Back to dark. You can see this really is just a process of working back and forth. Reinterject some variation. Some of these markings are more subtle than others, some are soft blends, some are a bit harder. And a lot of that's just intuitive. But trying to break up spaces to look unique is definitely still a larger goal. I think I like that a lot. If anything, we can just grab more of our burnt sienna, titanium white, burnt sienna heavy. This really is just a subject you can kind of go back and forth with forever. Reinterject some warmth over here. Maybe on this side too. Oh, that's beautiful. That's what we were really looking for. So I guess the real lesson on this is just, we don't settle. We keep going until we find what we really want. Almost done. All right, now we're going to drop in the base of our water here. And we're going to do so initially with quite a dark bluish gray. This is going to be the darkest pigment we've used thus far. If anything, it'll be akin to what we used for this little line work here. And we can just actually test our mix in this spot have it work along the edge. You can see that it's not a straight line, it kind of goes up and down, and that's intentional because the water that's coming in isn't going to be perfectly straight, right? So we might even have it round a bit. That way your eye kind of collapses in on the center. And then we're going to make it a little bit brighter extra titanium white. We'll take this and we'll incorporate the backing of a wave right up here. Doesn't have to be perfect at all. There we go. And then we're going to go even higher and when we do that, yet again, more titanium white. The farther we get from us, the less contrast there will be. A little more atmospheric light, kind of bouncing around in the painting. So we'll just fill this in. And now you can see we essentially have three different bands of these darker values. And we'll now place in the, the middle of them. We'll make this a bit more blue, a bit more bright. We'll need a good amount of it. And you can see it's still quite dark, at least in relation to the canvas itself. And I'm going to blend this now, to the best of my ability, into that darker lip we've pre-painted. Like so. And then I'll do a slight bend and blend into the darker lip that we have at the top. We just need to make sure this is nice and thick. Then we'll go a little bit brighter. And 
we'll take this into the back. We'll do a lot of detail work on top of it soon. But for now, we're just building our base, blending it softly into those darker mixtures. If it looks a little choppy, that's okay. Waves are choppy. Just like so. We can even put a hint of this towards the center because that area will get more light via the reflection. Gets a bit darker on the sides. Gets a little bit darker right below this area, which again, we are going to just double down on. We're working into wet paint, so it'll go on very smooth having kind of roll down a little bit and I'm achieving that by just moving my brush in this motion and then very softly blending it into the rest of our markings and then up here we can do more of the same Nice and easy base. Let's get slightly more of that dark pigment. Make sure that this bottom area is clean. We like the values. We have sharp applications. Just like so. With that, let's get you a little bit closer. Okay, now we'll start building our first layer of highlights. And that just means interjecting some titanium white and extra ultramarine blue into our pre-existing mixture. Then we're going to switch on over to our liner brush. Make sure it's nice and damp, that way we can dense our bristles get a sharp marking and then from here we're essentially going to draw on the lip of our water here and you can see that I'm doing this in a lot of little strokes not just one distinct one and I'm doing that so that we can get some breakup some separation make it nice and unique and then I'll create multiple other expansions slightly behind. And this way it just looks like you have this water rushing up, it's rising, there's foam. There's a lot happening towards the front right here. And then these can of course come down little bit by little bit. But this is one of those things where you want it to be unique, you want intricacy, you want sharp applications. We are going to change our technique and our brush as we move a little bit farther back, but for now, we'll just work on the front of this section of waves. And then again, areas are going to come down, the light's coming back from here. So everything that's directly facing us will be a little bit darker. And then the tops will be illuminated, will be bright. So that's what we're working towards. You can see there's a bottom lip to this lip which I'm working on highlighting. So the water goes up, it comes down, then it goes up a little bit. And that's what you can see right here. This is what we're working down to right here. And then here's that top of the bottom lip again. Re-adding highlights to the 
tops of this section. And it'll look a little abstract when you get quite close. It'll look a little ambiguous, but that's good. It's not a bad thing. And then as we start to move a little bit farther back, the markings get less rounded and more horizontal. I can start doing that with this brush, but that's not what we're actually going to apply them with. Okay. So now we're going to put this brush down. We're going to pick up this guy right here. Put that down. Pick up our flat-headed, at least our little one. And this is where we go in with a myriad of horizontal strokes. We want to keep these nice and small. We are keeping openings in between them. That way we can see that darker water showing through. And again, this is just the fact that some water is raised, it's catching more light. Some water is on the opposite side of that light and therefore not getting so much. As we get farther back, my markings get closer and closer together. They start to combine to a point because we don't see that detail as we get that far back, right? So this is meant to be much more subtle and I'm even doing it as I run out of paint because it's okay if it's a little bit less opaque and certain in application where our foreground needs to be much more so. So, let's grab more paint. Let's start close to us. Horizontal markings, they're not too long. I find I get a sharper marking when I work right to left. That may change for you though, so try both. You can try pushing the brush. The brush. <laughs> I find the pulling portion just a little bit Sharper. Though, if we want it to be a bit more ambiguous towards the top, maybe we do that pushing motion instead. We can also go back and forth towards the middle, but this is this is more preference of how you like to work with your brush. And then in the very distance, we're doing those horizontal marks of this highlight. However, there is rarely an opening. We're pressing a little bit harder with our brush. That's because, again, we just don't really see that detail from that far away. Okay, let's take a step back. So, stepping back, looking at it from a distance, the pattern is definitely there. Let's double down on that by making it, yet again, even brighter. More titanium white in the mix. In general, I'm still grabbing some blue and some Mars black, not because I want to make it more saturated or darker, but just because I need more pigment. Now, switching to the smaller flat-headed brush, we're going to attempt to work over top of our previous markings. We won't always be successful, but we can make a good honest try. And that's what we'll do. There we are. It's looking quite clean, just from the beginning. We want to make sure that we don't accidentally pick up too much pigment before making these applications, because the more pigment we have on our brush, the less of a sharp marking we can render. But I think we're doing pretty well. Again, as we get towards the back, we get closer with our markings. Things kind of start working together to a much greater degree. And 
and as they get towards the top, I want those very non-opaque applications coming through. Back to the foreground with new paint. And then we also didn't do the lip of the painting with the liner brush in the way that we initially did, don't worry. We can go back and do that. The order here doesn't really matter. What does matter is that we are making intentional sharp markings. And I'm starting to run out of paint, so I'm working upwards. I'm just kind of continuing along the top until I am actually out of it. Which is taking some time. That's okay. Just getting more of the painting done, right? We can also take this same pigment, and work this up into the top. Again, we have almost no separation in between these markings. Well, that's okay. And yet again, towards the front with the real highlights. Here we are a bit closer. This is something that honestly you could go in and you could do three or four different layers. It's not a big area, it's not taking the longest time. And it is just a fun application. It's one of those things where if you play some music in the background it can be very rhythmic. Starting to run out of pigment. Grab a bit more. And you can see every time I apply it, it gets brighter. I'm not changing the mix, I'm not making the mix brighter. We're just building on top of brighter bases. And because acrylics are semi transparent, whatever we apply is really a combination of what we had on the palette and what we had pre existing on the canvas. Now this isn't, this isn't it, this isn't our final layer, we are going to do more with it, but I'm going to let that dry for a second, I'm going to move up, I'm going to apply more of this highlight, predominantly in the center this time, because we've built it up a couple of times, I'm focusing more on the middle section, where the light's really going to be, and then this and this can be a bit darker. All right. Now we do go brighter. And I'm simply doing that by adding extra titanium white to my mix. Doing nothing else to it. Grabbing this nice flat headed brush. Starting in the center. And I will let this dissipate as we move to the left and right in a similar way to what we were doing before when we were moving up. The more dramatic that transition, the more dramatic the piece as a whole. There isn't a right or a wrong there. It's dependent on what you want out of your piece. There's still so much room to brighten this if we wanted to. Though, I want to leave some room for that with our 
golden highlights because they too will find a place in this water. Love painting water. Love being in water, love looking at water. It's just one of those natural subjects that renders so much varied joy, relaxation, appreciation, all of the good things. Might soften this just a little bit as a whole. Essentially just doing a wash right now. Okay, yeah, let's take a let's take a step back. Now, stepping back, I actually love it. I think we're going to switch to the liner brush and we're going to do what we couldn't with the flathead, and that's make these more intricate, free-flowing, rounded markings towards the lip of the water. For the most part, we're going to want to do this, or at least double down on this towards the center for the sake of directing light and attention. But we can do a layer towards the sides, especially a very watery one. As we know, that'll dry a bit darker, be semi-transparent. And we can also do little taps and dots just towards the outskirts of it. And what this is going to do is create the implication of a splash to a degree. So I'm lining the top highlights of our lip with that fairly sporadically. It's not around all of it. Just the areas we want real attention on. See that? Nice and easy. Now let's bring it down here and there. If I get lost in the light of a reflection, but it won't stand out amongst the darker areas down here. And we need the lighter ones just so it doesn't feel like there's a hard stop, just so it doesn't feel out of place. taps in these brighter portions. Now we have both a blue and an orange tap in this bottom area. So we're matching application techniques with complementary colors. And it just creates this beautiful confluence visuals. You can see them slowly building up the values. We didn't go in with anything excessively bright initially, but we, we built up to it. Let's just do slightly more towards the center. that it is brighter than the edge. Now let's take that same brush, same technique, same pigment, and we'll craft the tops of these waves because they too will get highlight. Sometimes there'll be a little splash
and we want this to be slightly brighter than what we have right behind it. Now we can still show to a point and you may be using the same pigment but as long as this layer is thicker than the one that you had behind it will stand out because it will be brighter because it will be more opaque and it'll be more the pigment that we have on our palette and less so that which we already have on the canvas. And part of this will be crashing down here and there. And you can even create some layers like that. Areas that fall and rise. Not going to do too much detail along the sides, and you know why. Just want that eye towards the center of the painting. When I have almost no paint, I can also just do some little lines that run up from the horizontal base that we have up towards the wave. And it's just a bottom of a bell motion. There we go. Excellent. We'll let that dry. We'll probably clean our brushes fairly well and our water, and then we'll add some highlights into this because this reflection is going to be here in part as well. Not so dramatically because this is moving and this is much more still, at least in terms of the general movements in the water. So I'll show you how that all works. Okay, so from here, we're going to grab a little bit of our CAD yellow, burnt umber, Naples yellow, and we want this to be more Naples yellow heavy, along with titanium white, because we don't want it to be too saturated. And because we're placing it over the orange, I think I will just double down on the burnt sienna as well. Everything on my palette is fully dry, so I don't have to worry about that. It is the next day, so I'll switch over to a damp, smaller, flat-headed brush. And again, this light is going to be coming down over the water. So it's time that we start incorporating that. Going to be applying it over the highlights we already have established, predominantly and initially in this central area. If we can have the option of applying it to the top or the bottom of the highlight, we're applying it to the top because this is light hitting the top of the water, the waves, the movements, all of that. It's very watery, and intentionally so. I'm just looking for a hint of that warmer highlight, and we're letting it dissipate as you move towards the left and right. Like that. We'll grab a bit more. Here it's a bit less watery, so more stark. We're closer to the actual light back there. But we can, of course, double down on the areas in the foreground that are deserving of those additional applications. Added light and warmth. Yeah, you can also do this with a glaze, should you want to. And what I'm doing is almost a glaze at this point. We're just barely augmenting the hues. We're not really playing with the values. And it's so watery that I can actually really just move over all of it without any real issue, which is great. That said, I think I'm going to take a step back and see if we're working in the right direction. Okay, so stepping back, I realize that I like it. Definitely added the warmth that we need, but 
the mixture that we have here is darker than what we were using for the highlights before. So it doesn't really make sense that the light is darker than the waves and the innate blue in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to brighten this up and a lot more titanium white. We'll put that brush back down, pick up our small flathead, and then we'll re-interject those highlights towards the top. If your canvas is still very wet from that last application, I would wait till it dries just a little bit. That way you can get a proper coverage. But I think mine is in a, in a decent place for this. So, already, while the mixture isn't dramatically different, I think we can see uh, an impact, a change. Definitely feels brighter. Makes a bit more sense. And therefore feels better. Often things feel right with paintings when our brains can kind of logically figure them out subconsciously. We don't have to think about it. We just know it to be correct from visuals we've seen before and just how we know the world works, right? So this is one of those situations where again, it's not a dramatic change, but it feels better and it feels better because it is more correct. And that's, that's what we're going for. Good, very good. Might just go slightly brighter. And I didn't change the mix. I'm just applying highlight on top of highlight, which is slowly building, giving us more of the pigment that we have on our palette, rather than the amalgamation of pigments that we have on our canvas. Because mine was a little bit wet, so I was getting the, the pigment from before. And we also have that darker pigment showing through, of course, right? But this is, this is bringing it together. Now this is something we can spend a lot of time on right now. But I think I'm actually just going to add a little bit more, as you can see. And then we'll take a break. We'll start working on the clouds and the sky because this is going to be dependent to a point on the clouds and the sky. And we want to make sure that it all works together. So we'll just use what I have left on the brush. Then we'll take a little break, come back here when it makes sense. but I am very happy with this as a base. I think our textures are great. I think our colors are great. I think the transitions are great. I think it's incredibly close to what we want. And towards the end of the painting, it'll probably just take two minutes of touch-ups in one direction or another. And it'll feel just how we want it to. Okay. That said, let's also just briefly Take our smaller liner brush. I say smaller. This is our this is our only liner brush. This is the only one we need. But let's take this. Just add a little bit of highlight to the central top of this wave. I have a bit too much water on my brush there. Need it to be more opaque. And this is something we can go back to and do again later should we need to, but. It's going to be a great look. We can also, because we didn't, get these little 
portions in the front. I'm not going to get all of them because some of them do lean in and therefore will have too much shadow. But There we go. Definitely livens it up, right? Okay, so with that in a good place, we're going to start working on the sky up here and likely up here. I want to establish these spots before we do the clouds because I want to layer the clouds on top of both this and that. So we're going to start here, just kind of continue, follow through with this palette. The light here will dictate what we're doing towards the top and how we do the bottom of the clouds. And we're going to start with a fairly basic base. We'll build on it. So here we have the larger flat headed brush and I'm going to begin by rendering a warmer orange, something fairly desaturated. So there's a lot of titanium white. There's a good amount of burnt sienna. The yellows we'll use an equal mixture, but to a lesser extent. And again, we want this desaturated. So what does that mean? It means we use a little bit of Mars black, just like so. You can see it's starting to shift towards a green, just a, just a hint. So we're going to balance that with more of our burnt sienna. Now we have a really beautiful orange. We'll take this, we'll just do a little test down towards the water. See if it fits. It does. Excellent. And now, what we're going to do is we're just going to start applying this up here. And something you'll notice very quickly is that the top of this wave is going to get messy. That's okay. That's because we didn't layer background to foreground like we normally do. Typically, that is the correct way of going about it. However, opted not to this time because I wanted to determine the values here before I determined the, the values towards the top. I just thought it would be a easier way of ensuring I really get exactly what I want in the foreground. Otherwise, this would have all been very dependent on this. Now it's kind of the other way around. We're also going to lose a lot of the clouds, and that's okay. We'll just redraw them in. But right now, I just want a base layer of orange. And you can see I'm actually just scraping this in. Typically something I don't encourage because we do want thick layers, but we're just going to have to do multiple layers anyway because this is inherently very thin pigment. That said, we'll let this dry, and then we'll go back in with layer number two. Okay, so our underpainting has dried to the touch, and I'm going to go into the second layer with a slightly different approach. So this time, I'm going to mix a gray to begin with, because this is extremely thin, as you can see, and we just need so many layers like that. So I'm going to use a lot of titanium white to thicken our initial mixture. Then I'll add some burnt sienna. You can see it's much more gray, which I actually like. The more gray this is on the sides, the more the light in the center will pop out, have a dramatic effect. So we'll just turn this. Oh, actually, you know what? I love this. And you can see the orange showing through. So it's really nice. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to move this forward. Not going to go too high. In fact, I'm only going to go to about there because we're going to have these openings in the clouds which will be much brighter and it'll be easier to work the light over this backing than it will be over the current more gray application. So we'll just work this up. You have these ornate, unique edges, which are great. And this should all be wet still. 
we'll do a little test over on this side and if it's not we'll just reapply more paint then we're going to make the edges a little bit blue to be cohesive with the waves it'll make a nice vignette so we'll just interject that into the mix like so so we have this nice transition from a warmer blue inward to more of the orange we have a transition not only in value but in hues let's go a little bit more blue a little bit darker remember whatever we mix here isn't going to be what we have on the palette it'll be a mixture of that and what we have on the canvas which right now there's a lot of wet paint on the canvas so we're getting a dramatic swing in that direction not a bad thing not a bad thing at all but something to take consideration of and I think this is actually going to be great very happy so far okay now I'm just cleaning my brush let's go and mix a titanium heavy white orange with a lot of Naples yellow a little bit of our cad yellow reinstall that saturation for the orange we'll switch on over to the smaller flat headed brush because we don't want it to be too difficult to work in these spots. Now, as you can tell, this is still quite thin. You can still see canvas through it. It will need another layer, and that's just because we're working with a lot of hue and brighter hue. It's okay. And now we'll do a little bit of a mix, as you can see, into our grays. This is just where it begins. Creating a bit of a softer transition throughout. using almost no pressure down here there we go and we'll just let this softly work its way out and back and with this I'm going to do a bit of finger painting. I always joke about finger painting, but it really can be useful. Just make sure that your hands are extremely clean. You don't have a lot of oils on them, because those oils will make it difficult to build up paint on those areas later. Okay, and now once all of that is dry, I'm going to grab an abundance of titanium white, a little bit of our Naples yellow, you can see this is quite bright. There's a hint of the burnt sienna in from our other mix. And I'm not going to waste the paint that I have on my brush. I'm going to just put this in here as best I can. Accepting very early on that I'm going to need to go over the edges with a different brush. But we'll get some of that off there. We'll switch to our smaller flat headed brush the details now I'm going to continue working this all towards the edges and we can build it out we can soften see that using a very soft touch of the brush. Then I'll 
add some extra highlight to the bottom as it dissipates. We can still see this gray area, it's still shapely. We're making sure that all of this is in line with the highlights that we have at the bottom. You can see that I'm slowly working my way away from hard edges. I'm also not moving my brush horizontally. You can see that there's this diagonal approach because that's the way light is going to be moving. We'll do the same on the other side. And we're yet to apply the rays of light, but this is just kind of prepping us for that stage. You can just make all of it a little bit brighter. Wash it out slightly. There we go. Now, because we had to move all of that paint around, that which we had there became significantly more thin and needs reapplication. So that's what we're doing. Also, I'm using this brush because there were portions that I did want to be a bit more stark and have sharp edges. However, if you want this all to be soft, in my brush set, you also have a filbert brush, and as you can see, it has rounded edges. So you can soften all of this just using the corner of this brush. You can even apply it with that brush if you want. Just depends if you want those harder, sharper markings that I'm currently going for, or something a bit more delicate. Trying to cover up all of those previous just orange spots that were still thin on the canvas. Grabbing some extra water so that I can also create some soft line work. Though we do want to be careful with our water because the more we add, the more we thin our paint. You know what, I think I will switch on over to the filbert for this portion, just because I do want this to be nice and soft. I'm just using the edge of the brush. There we go, that's beautiful. That's what I was looking for. All right, so upon revisiting this, I realized, you know what, it, it actually, it looks kind of rough a little bit, that's okay. It's meant to at this point, just thought we should reiterate that. And we're going to go brighter. So more titanium white than ever. We're still using a little bit of our CAD yellow. We're still using a little bit of our Naples yellow. Still using a hint of our burnt sienna. However, you can see that this pigment in relation to this is a bit more yellow and is brighter as a whole. It's very much what we've been looking for. And we just continuously build this up. Now again, there's acceptance that this pigment is not going to be what we have on our canvas. It'll be an amalgamation of this and the color that's already there, but that's okay. And I'm going to start by applying this in this central area using the filbert brush because of the round edge. 
you know, it'll hold the filbert brush down a little bit just so my hand's less in the way. We can even do this circular motion with the corner of the brush to get something nice and soft. Subtle, we're doing a wet into dry blend right now. Everything on the canvas is fully dry. And we're just continuing to bring this down. We can still see portions of this bottom part show through, which I like, because we're going to reestablish that in later layers. We're still just building bases. And we have a little bit of extra light coming through clouds there. And this area as a whole should be a bit brighter. Then we will have a streak of light coming from here like an original sketch. And we'll just make it softer as we get towards the bottom. We do another one here. Grab some extra water. And we can make these transitions a bit softer. Very subtle, complementary beams as well. We want to be careful with our water because we are still trying to build up pigment, but as it starts to dry, we can use more and more. And we have another, another beam of light right through here. another working its way through there then it continues like this we'll need to go back and reapply hue but that's fine Definitely getting there. Building up the light to be more opaque towards the top of each beam. And we'll just have it kind of fade out. I think we could make this a lot more orange. I think that's the next play. Okay, so very honest update. I really messed up that area. So I went back, spent the last half an hour just kind of trying to put it back together in the way that you last saw it. And I think we're close. It's not perfect, but it's not meant to be at this point. And I also, despite redoing it, decided to redo it with a very, le with a not very saturated palette because what we had before wasn't very saturated. And I intended to resaturate it. And while I was repainting it, I could have resaturated it, but I thought, you know what, no, we'd, we'd wait and we'd do this together. So right now, you have a rough looking sky. We have the idea of some beams of light. We have the idea of some clouds. It's still kind of in those foundational stages, but if you mix your pigments, just like me, it's likely that things are less saturated than they should be, and they should be akin to what we have right here. That's okay. If yours is saturated like this, then you get to skip the next step. It's okay. So, what we're going to do, once this is fully dry, and mine is, we're going to grab our larger flat-headed brush, we're going to grab some of our burnt sienna, this is all dry on my palette, so I'm not worried about it, about half that, Cad yellow, hint of our Naples yellow. We don't want a lot of Naples yellow because it's very thick and it desaturates and what we're looking to do right now is resaturate, right? So now I'm going to make my brush incredibly wet, make this watery 
mix. As you can see, it's like watercolor. And then I'm going to do something quite bold. I'm just going to apply that over the top here. Now I'm going to make my brush extremely wet again, take off all of that extra pigment, get a bit of a blend on both sides. And just like that, we have this very warm, illuminated space. If you don't like the hue, you can take paper towel. And to be honest, I do like the hue, but just for the sake of this being a lesson, you can take a bit of it off, quite simply. You can even be directional with it. So that's an option. Said, I really like this. While it's wet as a whole, we have an opportunity to be quite playful. We can get some softer blends. So going back to my smaller flat-headed brush, now I'm going to grab some titanium white, a little bit of our Naples yellow, a little bit of our Cad yellow, a little bit of our burnt sienna. We're grabbing just a little bit of everything in the warm palette. We're going to go up to this central spot. Let that light just naturally come down and dissipate. Like so. More titanium white in the mix, I think. Because that which we apply is mixing with that warmer wash that we just incorporated. And you can kind of go back and forth with washes like this and then re-establishing highlight until you get it exactly how you want. But this is a really easy way of building your space. And by making it initially less saturated, we gave ourselves the option of making it as saturated as we wanted through the glaze, through the wash where otherwise we would have been somewhat stuck with what we already had. So we just gave ourselves some extra leeway. It wasn't intentional, to be honest, but it's uh, just one of those things where it works out for the best. We just kind of trusted the process, you know? I think I'm actually very happy with that. You notice I reintroduced this cloud. You can do that before or after. I'm going to soften the edges a bit so it looks like the light's kind of overtaking portions of it, but it itself is too thick for the body to kind of take that light. We could definitely make this a bit more orange to be cohesive there, but I don't know that it's necessary. I think I kind of want to continue moving up in the piece before we make such commitments. Though, you can see that I'm continuously re-interjecting this titanium white as we let previous layers dry, because as they dry, we have this opportunity to build in a way that we don't when it is wet. And now we need to make sure that the white in there is brighter slightly than what we have down here. May let that dry, come back to it again, but so far, very happy. Now, while I kind of sit with that, let it dry, kind of establish what I want to do there, I'm going to move up to the top of the sky, which we're going to begin by rendering a gray, very much akin to what we used on the sides here, but just a little bit brighter. If you remember, initially, that was simply a mix of our white, black, 
and burnt sienna. So by going brighter, we just interject that extra titanium white. Going to throw that in and around our clouds here. Move it up. And then I'll do a couple of lines because we'll have some clouds. And that's what this is. These are clouds, at least the darker portions that don't have a lot of light. And then we're going to make it a lot brighter. Interject that titanium white. Maybe a little bit of each yellow. We want this to have the light from the bottom upon it to a degree. Working in between. Not doing the blend yet. I kind of want to establish this everywhere and elsewhere first. And then once you've done that, we can go in and we can get that soft blend into these subtle clouds. You can see it's dramatically changing the value to be something a lot softer, a lot brighter. That's great. We can just be playful with it. And also do more of these clouds up towards the top here. And this guy is going to be very eclectic in clouds. Make sure that's nice and thick. Make sure all of it's nice and thick. Going back and doing a couple of layers. Then, we want some blue in our sky. The water is blue. That is blue in it. So, that's a lot of titanium white. It's a little bit of ultramarine blue. It's a little bit of Mars black, not much. And you know what, we'll also throw in a hint of burnt sienna too. I love this color. I think burnt sienna and ultramarine blue just create such great subtleties. And here you can see I'm really just working in to the rest of the sky. Blending back into that which we've pre-established. Working my brush in a bit of an X-shaped pattern to get full coverage. I'm not just moving the brush horizontally or vertically, going in a lot of different directions. And we're kind of bouncing back and forth between the burnt sienna mix and the ultramarine blue mix. Intentionally so. It's just going to give us a much more interesting sky. It looks like we have very light clouds, very thin clouds, just working their way through these spaces. And the more blue you have, the more openings in the clouds, the more soft clouds. So I'm making it a bit patchy, unintentionally so. Don't really have hard edges, though you can keep them if you want them. It wouldn't be incorrect. It's a preference thing. And again, I'm going to go over these just a little bit. Make them slightly visually softer. Great. Now we don't want this to be as bright as what we have down there, so we need to be careful of that, but I do think we can go brighter. It's all wet into wet right now because we're painting fairly quickly. Now let's go back to the burnt sienna mix. That's easy. We can even use what we currently have with the blue. We just add more of the sienna, a little bit of Mars black. I can see in the reference photo there's a cloud that kind of just works its way up through here. 
So we'll paint that in. Then there's a couple of clouds that softly move through here. This is a lot of fun. Make it slightly darker. For the bottom of the cloud, might be too much right there, but we'll blend it out. You know what? After blending it out, I think it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I won't really go up here much. I won't stay up here much. But this does accent the piece. You can see I'm just doing lots of little clouds through taps of my brush. And having these darker hues up here make the hues towards the bottom make a bit more sense. Now this is all a lot darker because we have the clouds under it which are creating this dramatic shadow in the back. That said, we can probably go slightly darker towards the top corner to create more of a vignette effect but also to tie this area in with this area. I know that they look very disconnected right now, just in terms of value and hue, but that's okay. When we put the clouds through here in, it'll visually start to make a lot more sense. I'm really falling in love with this palette. I think the subtlety in these are just wonderful and it's not even anything I'm doing. The colors are just mixing beautifully. It's making it easy. And again it's a very free area creatively. We kind of do what we want. Just doing more pigment through here because it's a bit thin on the canvas. Much better. Much, much better. Okay, so as that's drying, I made the decision with this that I actually do want it to be a bit more orange. So I'm not even going to grab any of the yellows this time. I'm just going to grab some of our burnt sienna. And again, you don't have to do this. This is really just if you like the hue or if you don't, the fact that you can change it. So now I'm going over it with an orange instead. nullifies a lot of the white that we had up there. That's okay, we can always go back and reject it. And I think that's what I want. I really do. Let's do a little bit of blue. Just a little bit. Not that much. <laughs> a little bit of blue towards the edges just to make the light feel a bit more directional in the center, that warmth. Can even do a hint right here, I think. Maybe in between. This is just me trying things. You don't have to, you don't have to copy these portions. This is to give you ideas. And I might also use this just to soften the backing wave. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, excellent. We found it. <laughs> Just trial and error, right? Uh, the orange should all still be wet, which is great. It means we can switch to the filbert brush, the one with the rounded edges. And we can go with a little bit of Naples yellow, but mostly titanium white. We can re-interject those highlights, which we lost in the glaze. Typically, when you add a wash, a glaze, 
The goal is to change the hue, but not the value. So the color, not how bright or dark it is. However, it's inevitable when you go over something as bright as the light we were working on. So we just re-interject that light. And it's easy right now because this whole area is wet. So I'm doing a wet into dry blend. getting close to really liking this. And you can kind of just go back and forth with all of these layers until you get what you really want, right? Also, notably, this cloud creates this shadow. One is on top of the other, right? I'm going to do another little cloud that attaches to this large piece right here, and that'll help continue that idea. But. running some light across the top of the backing waves. For the 800th time, more titanium white. Maybe we'll do more of this again. We'll let it dry, we'll see. But that is by far the best we've had it. Despite me royally ruining it earlier <laughs> and having to rebuild it off camera. That happens, it's okay. We just do the same thing again and we probably do it better because we've already done it once and that makes us better at it in general. So, I like this. There's some details over here in the reference photo, and there's some extra details in here in the reference photo. I don't think I want to overcomplicate it. I think I'm happy with it for now. I think we start working on the larger cloud. Okay, so I did the second layer up here, let it dry, and now we can't see the canvas showing through, which is great. Colors come through a bit better. We're going to grab some of our ultramarine blue, Mars black, titanium white, and we're going to mix up a much more gray version of our blue, a little bit darker in general, but we do still want that hue to come through. So we'll just put that together, and we'll take it, we're going to apply it in a couple of areas. The first, going to be right through here, on the right hand side of this larger cloud. We're going to do lots of little taps to create ornate, unique markings along the edges, like so. And then we're going to go to the other side of this cloud and we'll apply another one. And the idea here is that we're just going to build up multiple layers of clouds, make it nice and three dimensional over here. To the left, we also have a collection of larger clouds. And these need to be equally as unique. We don't want to mirror what we have on the other side. And again, we may have gone over portions of our drawing, but that's okay. We can always redraw it. If you'd like real help with the drawing process, I do have the traceable up over on Patreon, so you can essentially transfer the image as many times as you'd like. You can do it at the beginning, you can do it once you've started applying paint and you need to do it again, because the previous layer covered it up. But up there, you can also get a bunch of bonus lessons. Some of them are on big 24 by 
36 inch canvases if you like to work big. There are also ones in black and white, which are pretty fun. You can also get all my ebooks up there, including acrylics for beginners, which is essentially the essentials. Everything you need to know about acrylic painting. And you know what? I'm actually going to go back over here while we're working with this pigment and do a second layer. Just make sure it's nice and thick. But there you can also get access to our exclusive Facebook group where everybody shares their work and you get to see different renditions of these pieces. I always find that very inspiring. A bunch of ebooks full of traceables. It's a lot of fun stuff. So if you're interested, check it out. It's a great way to support the channel. There's a link in the description. And very soon you can also get these paintings, including this one, up there. I think that announcement comes a little bit later this week. But I think that's just about how much I want to paint with this pigment right here. So once we have that first layer on there, it can be dry, it can be wet, but what we're going to do is we're going to make two variants of it. We're going to make one that's quite a bit brighter by interjecting an abundance of titanium white. And then we're also going to take one, make it quite a bit darker. When we make it darker, we're also going to rework in some ultramarine blue, just like this. So we have the original hue in the middle. We have a bright one, we have a dark one. I'm going to take the dark one and I'm going to apply that towards the bottom of our clouds, just like so. The areas that will receive the least amount of light. I'm going to wipe off my brush Grab the mid value yet again, and if you don't have that much, you can just remix it using what's left of the dark pigment. Again, not too tricky. And we're just going to apply that on top. And then we'll do a subtle blend from one into the other. That way we have a gradient. We have a build of light. Just like so. Working in an X-shape pattern is great because it moves paint not only vertically but also horizontally. Now the top of our cloud is still a void of any dramatic change but what we can do is we can grab that mid value one more time go up to just millimeters from the top. Again millimeters from the top millimeters from the top. I'm doing all three at the same time. You don't have to, but it does keep it cohesive. And then I'm going to switch on over to my filbert brush. Actually, you know what? Let's go with our smaller flat. I want slightly harder edges on these clouds. I'm going to grab the highlight that we mixed right here. I'm just going to softly work that around our edges, not connecting with the initial mid value that we just applied. We're putting it on the outskirts here initially. We want this to be quite small. The smaller it is, the better it'll be. We'll have more room to play that way. Okay, now we're going to go back and now we're going to blend it into the mid value. And this is something which we can switch to the filbert brush for. And I'll get you a bit closer. Though, you know what? In moving the camera, I realized I actually want this to have a little bit of burnt sienna in it. That way it has some warmth from the light that is wrapping around it. it doesn't have to be dramatic, just a little bit. Switching to the filbert. We'll re-interject that and then we softly blend down. We can re-grab our mid value and bring that up as well. But we're having the meat in the middle. We're going for a little bit of a blend. Doesn't have to be dramatic. 
Shouldn't be dramatic. Not through here. You can see that I'm just slowly softening our transition. You can work it back. If you have brush strokes, it's actually okay. It'll just look like different volume in the clouds, especially with the highlights towards the back. What I'm doing right now gives it a lot of added depth, makes it feel more round, natural. You don't want too much of this paint, just enough. Then we can start moving that in. Then we can go back to the mid value, move that out. Oh, I love that. Have it dissipate as we work our way down. We're working somewhat wet into wet, somewhat wet into dry. It is starting to dry, but not to the point where it's difficult to work with. Again, we're going to reject some of that mid value, some of our burnt sienna infused highlight. Back to the mid. I think I'll get a bit more playful with my shape. And then moving my brush strokes in ways in which I want to form light working away around the cloud. We're also going to tap little protrusions to our clouds randomly in the surrounding areas and that'll give it some scale. Right? The smaller cloud you paint, the larger the ones around it look. quite a few clouds overlapping, which I need to redraw. But because of that, I don't think I'll do too much in terms of the build and detail here. These are the distant clouds. We don't need an overabundance of overwork. Okay, now we'll take a step back and we'll start working on this next layer of clouds. It's right in front of the ones that we just did in the background there. And again, I do want to start with the mid value. So here's what we'll do. We'll head in, start applying this. We have another little cloud, or at least small in comparison, right through here. So I'm going to initially work to avoid that, just until I feel like I have a good footing in the painting and my general understanding of it. We'll work our way over here until eventually we get to this little cloud which I've redrawn in that was in the initial sketch but we lost it in the paint so I just took a little bit of Conte and drew it back over our acrylics. And I think this is about as far as we need to go with that. We will grab a bit more of our blue for these little guys. And then we'll grab a little bit of our highlight, which again does need just a little bit of burnt sienna. Said a little bit, grabbed a lot, <laughs> but I think this is a great mix. 
Yes, that's perfect. Okay. So I'll just roughly sketch that around the outskirts of our cloud. We'll do the actual blend with a different brush. Okay. Now, switching on over to our filbert. We'll blend our mid values do our highlights. Really quite simple. I've had quite a bit of practice in the background. This is just an extension of that technique. This time we're working a little bit backwards though. We started with the darker values last time. Now we're going in with the light ones and this is just to show you that you can, you can be a bit playful with it. And I'm trying to get to most of it before it dries. If it does, that's also okay. It's not the biggest deal. We can always do another layer. And as we know, the more layers, typically the better. Let's get you a bit closer. Okay, now we also need to grab a little bit of the darker hue for the bottom of our cloud. It's important as well. I think that this slightly more gray mixture actually does a fantastic job of giving the canvas proper coverage because it has a lot of titanium white in the mix which is just an inherently thick pigment. Unlike the blue mixture that we had. An ultramarine blue, it's not, not thick. It's not like a cadmium which is incredibly thin, but Mars black and titanium white just do such a such a good job. Okay, so I like this. I think it could be a little bit darker at the bottom. I, I think we need more contrast. I'm not going to blend this as dramatically because I don't want to lose that contrast again. I still want the tops to be a bit brighter in general. I think we could also use a bit more blue in all of it. So I'm just going to re-interject that, make this slightly more saturated. Starting to lose the edges a bit, but that's okay. We can always go back and re-interject them. Again, the more layers, the better. Much better. Much, much, much better. Okay. Let's head back to our filbert, to our highlight. Don't want too much paint. And hold my brush a bit farther back, both to make the application process a bit more randomized, but also just so my hand, again, is less in the way. Sometimes it will happen. I feel like that's just inevitable with this. We get lost in the process and the painting and we're excited. We get our head in the canvas. But do try to mitigate it to the best of my ability. You can see that we're starting to bring the highlights in, creating those additional little shapes inside the cloud, which create more volume. More light on the edge. More light on the edge.
a little bit of a blend back. Finally working our way over to the other clouds on the left hand side. Love this. If you don't like a certain area, we can just go back to our mid blue. Work that in. It also makes our blends softer. Which is nice. You can see in the reference photo that this area kind of comes down in the highlight. I like it. We just kind of keep working it till we get what we want. The only way this doesn't work is if we stop working. If we give up on it, we'll get any better. But if we keep working on it, we'll continue learning, we'll continue building. Layer by layer, step by step. I think that's just a great reminder in general. You want something to work in life, you, you work for it. You work at it, you don't stop. If you really want it, you make it happen, right? Adding a bit of extra highlight to the back here. Now we could actually do a lot to improve these. So we're going to take some time. We're going to switch, I think, on over to our smaller flat headed brush. Just because I want some detail work, I'm going to grab our highlighted pigment and just using the corner of the brush, not even the full body of it. I'm going to re-render some outlines and I'm also going to move inwards with these outlines in ways that we previously were. However, we were doing so with the filbert before and I was rendering these beautiful soft blends which I like and we need but I think it's really the combination of the soft blends in conjunction with the hard lines that are going to make this feel like a cloud in the way that we want it to. Now I'm also not just going over the edges. You can see I'm working my way in with a lot of these taps and strokes. And that's very intentional because we want that light to wrap its way around. And there are also going to be little portions of cloud that protrude and catch light throughout this process too, right? It doesn't all just happen on that edge. So we'll work our way through here. We find ourselves on the other side. Slowly building up these little guys. Don't have to do it all at once. And then once we have a lot of those sharper markings, we can go back and we can blend a little bit as it starts to dry. This will leave a lot of those markings present, but just softened. You can see just like that, so much more volume. We'll do a hint of it towards the back. 
just make sure it's cohesive. This can even bring this cloud forward into what we have in the foreground. It's a bit more connected tissue wise. We'll take this and we'll line the edge of this cloud as well. And if we don't do a lot of a gradient, we'll get a much more stark, noticeable marking, which I like. Just feels a bit more dramatic, and I think that combination of the two works really well together. Now we're back over here, reestablishing edges. Not doing all of them, being somewhat selective. We also have a cloud that's right here, and it's brighter. So I'm just going to paint that in, in itself. See that, uh, that in the reference photo just now, and I thought, you know what, that'll look. That'll look quite nice. We can go back in, we can thicken it as we continue, but it creates an additional layer, additional interest. You can have little break off pieces too. I like that. Again, more scale in general for the painting. And these are all processes that we can go back and forth and do, you know, a hundred times as we just perfect them and get exactly what we want. You already know the more layers we do, typically the better it'll look. I like that movement as well. It's very sweeping in general. It's grand, a lot of volume. And we can continue to build those highlights, but at this point, we have quite a few. We have form, we have depth, we have blends. And I don't want to overdo all of that because we're still yet to do the other dramatic portions of our cloud and we don't want to force ourselves to have to present that in a way that we don't want to. So, for the sake of the future of our painting, we're going to take a little bit of a break from what we are currently working on. We're going to move down on our canvas, and we're going to block in this bottom portion. I say that, and then you know what? I see this little area right here, and I think, you know what? I just want a little bit more light wrapping around the top. So easy to just paint forever once you get started. Okay. I think I'm just about ready to proceed as we should. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to get a bit closer. You can see that I've roughly sketched in the base of our clouds, and that's what I actually want to paint next. Now this is going to be quite warm. It's right next to the light. It's really not only working around it, but shining through it to a point. So we're starting with an equal mixture of our burnt sienna and our Naples yellow. We're grabbing abundance of our titanium white. We're working together this great orange, which we will then desaturate slightly, a little bit of Mars black. Makes it muddy to a point, but that's also okay. And now we'll just paint in our first layer. And I do mean first layer. This isn't going to be as thick as we need it to be for multiple layers, and we're also probably going to want to edit, augment, make the value a little bit different, change the saturation, do all of that, right? It's a, it's a process. Here, as I move it around, you can actually see the canvas showing through somewhat dramatically. That just speaks to the fact that Again, multiple layers will be required, but this is a good first layer, right? And we'll do a little bit of a blend upwards. There's going to be another cloud right here, but I think we're going to paint as if it doesn't exist. And then we'll just paint it in later. So we'll bring that up. <laughs> Very funny seeing 
a somewhat completed area, a somewhat completed area, and then this in the center. But that's okay. It's part of the process. Now let's go with a blue burnt sienna mix. A little bit on the darker side, a little bit of Mars black, a little bit of titanium white, have this great gray, warm gray. And now we'll start applying this as our second layer. I like this better. Immediately, I can tell you I like this better. It's not dramatically different, but it's different enough. There we go. We have that warm, lighter pigment showing through it and mixing with it, which is perfect. We're still layers and layers away from having it look correct, but it's a good start. Now let's go with that darker blue that we mixed previously. I still have that on my palette. Always try to leave a little bit of your previous pigments, and the subjects that you're currently working on on your palette, just so you can see exactly what that pigment was, mix beside it, get exactly what you need. Nice and easy. Here we can do a little test. It's close, it's a little bit dark. It's a little bit less saturated. Let's throw in a hint of blue, a hint of titanium white. Probably don't need much of either. Could still be brighter. We're going much brighter to account for the dark pigment that's already on the canvas and that we need to work with. Again, there's going to be a, a whole other cloud here, so it doesn't, doesn't matter that much, but... There we go. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to ride it along the bottom edge. Now we have connective tissue between our top area and what will now be a somewhat wet bottom area. Applying it towards the edges to begin with because they will be the darkest. And already I love this color. That is so promising. It's too thin, but we knew that would be the case. You can see it works its way into a similar palette of the, of the sky quite well. And we'll work our way across the top, find those healthy blends, like so. Now let's, let's take a little bit more of our darker blue, Mars black, titanium white, ultramarine, darker, 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 darker. Let's work that along the edge, let's work that around this edge. I want to make this distinctively different than that. Value-wise, I want it to be a little bit darker, I want it to be a little bit more blue. That's exactly what we're achieving. Doing this rather quickly so it's all very wet and wet. A lot of work to do, but getting there. Let's make our pigment there quite a bit brighter. Much more Naples yellow, titanium white. Still a bit of that burnt sienna, but not much. Okay, wish me luck. It's close, it needs to be darker. Mars black. Let's try over here. Much better. Okay. We're going to do a lot of layers. We're going to build this up. We're going to, we're going to do a lot. The warmth is still showing through because of the base layer. Let's ride this towards the last pigment we had. Blend upwards, blend back down, connect. Let's grab some of our darker blue. 
go back in for the blend, keeping the edges wet so I can keep working them in. And then, importantly, we're going to start working with horizontal markings to bring the highlighted pigment out towards the edge and the darker pigment in towards the clouds. That way it looks like we have layers of clouds with various openings where the light is shining through. And we blend the top so that it's nice and soft the way the light works its way down into these portions. See that? This can be nice and small or bigger. There we go. Trying to make my highlight look as natural as I can by creating that spread. This could be softer. Or more unique. That's already better. That's also better. See, a lot of subtlety in that area over time. Incorporate little clouds down here. Layer themselves over that light. Just create that extra little layer of depth. It's interesting, All right? Using the corner of the brush to create smaller protrusions. Very good. Then I'll also take a little bit of that pigment, work it up into the higher clouds, just so we have more of a cohesive palette throughout the painting. It's very soft. There's barely any pigment left on my brush. But it all works together. softest markings imaginable right now. You don't have to do this, but this is just if you want your color to come together slightly more. Okay, now from here, we are going to re-interject that cloud that was in that space. So we'll start by mixing up our mid-blue, as we've done multiple times before. Should just get quicker and quicker, easier and easier. Of course, as I say that, I somewhat struggle <laughs> to remix that which you've had before. It's okay though. We just keep working at it, asking ourselves, is the pigment bright enough? Is it dark enough? Is it saturated enough? Is it too saturated? And I think we just found it. So now we make the darker variant just off to the side. That one is nice and easy. And then we'll grab a little bit of it. We'll create the much brighter variant with the hint of burnt sienna. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit brighter. Quite close. There we go. Okay, so I have all of these. Let's go back to our mid value. Let's interject that right where our cloud should be, and you see this on the traceable. I'm just going to freehand sketch it in. But you can see my brush has a couple of pigments on it. I'm actually just going to use the brighter portion of that to work the brighter edges and the darker portion of the brush to 
work the midsection of this cloud. Just make our lives a little bit easier. Might even combine this into that. Let's we'll see what happens. But so I also do another little one down here, just for the sake of balance. Maybe just done that partially. Then we'll grab our darker pigment. We'll put that towards the back and the bottom. This cloud is closer to us than what we have right behind, so it can be a bit starker, or a bit more stark, rather. Very good. Grab more of the mid value, go back and forth until we have that soft blend. Now let's switch on over to the smaller flat headed brush, grab some highlight. And just like this, we'll establish our new edges. Not going to do much over on the right hand side because we're just not going to have much light over there. Right? Work that in a little bit by a little bit. We can work that around the edges of the ones towards the bottom. I'm going to try to make sure that one is protruding more than the other. It's important. And then we'll do a bit of a blend with a fairly damp brush. It just means moving the bottom portion of that line work down, relieving pressure, making our application softer. Very good. Okay, I like that so far. Really feels like it's wrapping its way around the rest of our subjects. Let's head on over to the other side. As I noted, I liked these areas before, but we could definitely do more with them. I was just hesitant to until we had a greater understanding of the bottom of the cloud section. Now that we do, we can do a little bit of addition through those spaces. I think I might also just do a little wash of this slightly more bright, and burnt sienna heavy mix over that. Just mute it slightly. And I think I'm also going to build it upwards in a way that it wasn't before. There we go. Definitely better. Like the volume in it. Now, yet again, we're closer. We're grabbing our Naples yellow, our titanium white, hint of our burnt sienna, making this beautiful, somewhat muted, warm yellow. Switching over to our liner brush, making sure that's nice and damp, clean water. We don't want it to be diluted by blue. And now we can just, with this incredibly sharp brush, instigate some details around the edges and bottoms of our clouds, which are going to be taking on this beautiful light. And this Application-wise, texturally, will actually be fairly reminiscent of what we have in the water. 
We don't want too much of this because it can become distracting, a little overbearing visually, but a little bit in the areas where you really feel like that light will be prominent can be extremely beneficial to the painting. Doesn't take a great deal of work. Adding a lot of structure. A lot of it's lining the bottoms of clouds. Like so. We can also bring these highlights into the separation that we have through here. It's a fairly watery mix. And intentionally so. Let's just build over layer and layer. See, it's finally starting to come together. Okay. Also, I'm going to get the edges of these little protruding clouds, create intricate designs should we want to. We can blend this back should we want to, but it's a great way of just making sure that that light really looks like it's wrapping around our subject in a natural way. Beautiful. This is one of those places you can kind of just add for days and days. You can go back, you can touch up, you can fix. I'm doing little portions right now, right? They don't have to be big. They don't have to be these grand extensions. Subtlety can play a big role. Also. I'm going to wrap some light around these. Just give this some extra form. Maybe even blend it back a bit. Have to be careful with doing that. Such a bright pigment. But I think because of where this is, it makes enough sense. Just that corner catching that hard light. Okay, so stepping back, I'm actually going to do something quite dramatic. I love how this is looking. However, I think this could be a little bit warmer. So I'm going to do a little bit of a wash. I'm going to take an equal mixture of that Naples yellow, that burnt sienna, add a lot of water to it, make it essentially like a watercolor. And again, you don't have to do this. This is only if you want to change the warmth the hue, but I'm going to make this as thin as I possibly can in a clean area of the palette. I'm going to go down to the base area here, 
And then I'm just going to softly work my way up the painting. I'm going to make sure that my brush is Nice and clean. This is going to soften some of the values. It's going to bring things together. It's going to make it a bit warmer as a whole. And I actually like that it's softening it. I like it a lot because it's making the water down below look so much sharper, so much more in the foreground, right? When the clouds are extremely sharp and the water is extremely sharp, they really compete for that visual presence. And I wanted to push the clouds back a little bit. And this is doing a great job of doing exactly that. So just some extra warmth. And again, the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue just go so well together. They go well on top of each other. It's a beautiful mix of pigments, in my opinion. So love that. <laughs> very, very happy. I'll also note that we are coming towards the end of the painting, switching to the liner brush, and I always like to give a little keyword towards the end that you can put in the comments to know that you are part of, on average, the 13% who makes it to the end of these videos. And it's just a little badge of honor. I'll know everybody else who got to this point will know. But I think today our word, our keyword, is going to be wispy and it'll be that for all of the wispy little clouds and movements that we have in the water and about so you can just type that word or you can incorporate it into a sentence but again always fun to see who gets there right now i'm just going back and i'm adding additional highlights right near the point of light and i'm doing that because we did soften all of this, and this is one thing that I would like to be just a little bit sharper, because I wouldn't mind bringing the eye closer to the center of the painting and where the light is emanating from. So we're just doing a little bit of this, like so. Wrapping my light around the clouds. I'd like to say a big thank you to everybody who supports the channel up over on Patreon. It is because of you that I'm able to film these longer lessons and really put the time into making something a bit more elaborate like this. Truly would not be able to do it without your support, so thank you. We've been doing this for 10 years now, and it's a, it's a blessing very much appreciate it. Thank you for making that happen. I love teaching, love making artwork, and to do both of them here like this is a, it's a real pleasure. Also, again, if you're new to the channel, this is your first time here, remember you can get the traceable for this lesson, along with a picture of all of the materials, reference photos, all of the, all of that good stuff, up over on Patreon. There's a link in the video description. Up there, you can also get my eBooks. Over a hundred bonus lessons, big bonus lessons, all of the stuff we talked about before. Access to the Facebook group. And as of, I believe next week, you will also be able to get my paintings, including this one. I'm going to make a new tier for that. And I'm making, a, I'm making an announcement up over on Patreon. Still doing lots of finger painting. Can't, can't help it. And also, take some of that titanium white, hint of that Naples yellow. 
reincorporate that down in the reflection really build up that central spot I'll just have it dissipate as we get closer to us that way we don't accidentally bring the eye off of the painting in general but I love love the addition of the light There we go. Again, big thank you to everybody for just being here. Supporting traditional art, having the interest. I think that's wonderful. I hope you feel like you've learned something. I hope you feel inspired. I hope you feel excited and ready to go ahead and create something of your own, and if you've already started, if you've been painting along with me, I hope that it's going brilliantly for you. If it's, if you're struggling a little bit, that's okay. I told you I completely redid part of the painting as well, and that's honestly kind of a fun part of the painting process. You end up learning so much through those instances that don't only make the painting you're currently working on better, but all of the ones you work on in the future. So don't get frustrated when things get a little hard. That's just an opportunity to learn and become a, an even stronger artist in general. Okay? So hope you enjoy. Hope you have fun. If you haven't already, subscribe. There are so many lessons. Again, a decade's worth of lessons up on the channel right now. There are bonus lessons up over on Patreon, and I will see you soon with another new lesson. A couple of different fun series ideas that I'd like to try on the channel this year, and they'll be coming soon. So I will be seeing you soon with some new stuff. And uh, as always, you have fun, you take care, and you stay creative.